Well, this is the day that we've been anticipating. I've been recently watching a, a series on Netflix called Band of Brothers. It's been a really good series that I've watched a little bit of in the evening so far. So I guess is this is the day for us, not the day. Go day. We're going to start on corn silage today. We're going to the North Farm. The uh, farm where we keep dry cows and, and bred heifers. Our corn is drying down pretty quick. Um, been playing catch up with some stuff this summer, so getting things caught up a little bit here. So we're going to try and get that silo done this week. Our farm science review here in Ohio is this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we're trying to work that into. We like to go to that. It's really educational. You can see a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff you could never afford to have, but it's neat to see, but we can always find something we can learn there. Uh, new technology, techniques, ways that we can adapt the equipment that we have and modify it a little bit to make it work, or get new ideas of how to do things better in the future. So we're looking forward to that too. I think we're gonna try and do that on Thursday, so hopefully we get you some footage of that. But for now, this afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, we raised the unloader this morning at a a funeral to go to there right before lunch. Our, one of our pastors in our church, longtime pastor, passed away last week and wanted to go to that. Uh, really good service, Pastor Ray Aspinall passed away. So we're back in action now, so it's right after lunch. Everybody's fed and we're ready to go. So we're gonna head on down the road. Silent season, it's time to get her knocked out. So 
We're starting down here at the North Farm. We've got a 20 by 60 down here to fill. And after that, we'll probably head on down to start on the West Farm. But in the middle of all that, the uh, Farm Science Review is this week. So, Dad and I always like to try to get away at least once a year, go down there and do that. So that's what we're probably gonna do. I suppose Thursday, this is Tuesday, so we've got a couple days here. We can try and hammer out this 20 by 60 down here. This year is a little difficult. Uh, I gotta back all these wagons in. I suppose I wouldn't have to, but I don't wanna run over my beans. So I'm backing them in. We'll see how long I uh, do that until I get fed up of doing that. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, we'll go ahead and get back to place here, get fired up, and uh, go ahead and send a whole bunch of feet up this 8-inch fill pipe here and try and get this silo knocked out over the next couple days. Got some nice weather. Can't complain about that. Sunny. A little bit of cloud cover here and there, but really pretty decent weather. So it's not muddy. That's, that's the biggest thing. I hate filling silos when it's muddy. You just make a mess of the driveway, make a mess of your wagons. You just, you make a mess to, to sum it up. But, uh, we're gonna get hammered down here. Try and get some tonnage knocked out. Get after it. dreamed of having a Claus forage harvester. I always thought it'd be kind of neat to have one. We started out with a, a Gale 600 chopper on the farm 40 some years ago when I started working for my father-in-law. And in 1987 we bought our first uni system chopper. And we had that, oh, up until probably 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. And that's when we made the switch and got this chopper. Um, this chopper, the nice thing about a cloth chopper is there's an simplicity of design, the straight through crop flow technology, where the material comes right straight in and goes through a cutter head, through an accelerator, or a blower, I guess it depends on what you, what you call it, they call it an accelerator, through a spout, right out behind the seat into the wagon, or off to the side into a truck, the spout's rotatable about 180 degrees on either side. It's just a very simple system. The Uni system was very complicated. It had a lot of right angle gearboxes and the feed flow uh, changed direction. Um, there was about, I used to joke around, there was about a quarter of a mile of roller chain on a Uni. There, there was a lot of chain on a Uni. And uh, one of the things every day you did is take a paintbrush and some oil and move those chains up. Anytime you worked on that, you got black. This chopper is pretty simple. It has a, one great big V belt on the left hand side and that runs forward to your cutter head. Direct drive right off the engine to the cutter head. And uh, I think that's how they get the efficient power to the cutter head and the capacity they get out of these machines. Um, from that transferring across, um, you have another gearbox that runs your Peter house. But most of the power is, is transferred directly through that belt from the rear end of the, the engine right to the cutter head. Very efficient design. Hydrostatic transmission, three speed. Uh, very nice, infinite, infinitely variable, vary your speed due to the conditions of the crop. We have a four row head. We don't have a rotary head. 
rotary heads are kind of expensive. Um, when we bought this machine, the budget that we had, we went with this head. Uh, this machine was actually a, kind of a rare find. It had narrow rubber, which allowed us to get a four-row head. Otherwise, we'd have been up against getting a six-row head. Uh, I guess the thing that uh, concerned me about four or six rows is how far we'd go before the wagon got full. In good corn, it doesn't seem like you go far at all when the wagon is full, even these high-capacity wagons that we have. So the four-row head lends itself nicely, and you can get a decent way around the field and get something done on each load that covers the ground.
good morning, folks. Fallen day here. Ended up getting 18 loads in this silo yesterday. It's looking like it's probably going to need another 18 or 20. Just went up. Had to uh, adjust my distributor a little bit. It got stuck. So, had to run up there and have a climb first thing after morning chores here. So, got that done. Got the distributor running now. I'm going to go ahead and fire this tractor up. That way it can be warming up before I go ahead and throw a whole bunch of silage in the blower. And then we're going to run on out to the field, grab the first load from Dad, and hopefully, with any luck, get this silo full and maybe even move a little shelled corn today. We'll see what happens. stuck them on there so it'll just shoot that silage all the way to the other side and kind of work its way back and forth coming back towards us on the blow, blower side so got this fired up let it warm up for a sec and then we're going to go ahead and hammer down again and get this thing full see it way off in the distance over there but there's another Claus chopper running over there Jettis uh, custom harvesting is chopping hay over there on the horizon
Well, like all things, carnage has struck. You have a, you have a place to put bolts? No, but I can find somewhere, I guess. This chain belongs up on this here. Comes back here, the top side of this. I think it mainly drives these power corners, I think is what it mainly does. Mm -hmm. But it somehow broke. broke and now has wedged itself down in between the gathering chains. And now we're trying to decipher how on earth we're gonna get that out of there without lighting this thing on fire with a torch. Well, I suppose the wife will probably yell at me. We're down here at the Farm Science Review. Dad and I came down here. This is Thursday, last day of the show. I didn't film anything walking around, I guess. I don't know. I don't like talking in front of people still. So, <laughs> a little awkward about it. But anyways, we're getting ready to head out here. I think we've kind of made our way through for the day. Got here kind of late after morning chores, so. Gonna walk around a couple red ones here, film some of this and and I think we'll probably get back on the road and head for home. We got about a two hour shot to get home.